1,000 kilometers, 21 days, five different countries and six different cities. Zero euros. My name is Edwards, and in June 2016, I traveled for 21 days with absolutely no money. So, from Germany to Hungary, here was the challenge, to travel with no money. I emptied my wallet before leaving home, and I hit the road. And to toughen up the challenge a bit, I committed to not use internet. So I couldn't use websites like Couchsurfing, Elpix, or other similar websites that allows you to find accommodation or a host for free. And like this began one of the most incredible experiences I've ever lived in my life. When I came back home, everybody asked me the same question. How? How did you do that? How did you survive for 21 days with absolutely no money? I can't even survive for one day with no money. I have to eat, I have to sleep somewhere. Well, here is the secret. When you travel, you basically only have three things to pay. The first thing is transportation, getting from point A to point B. The second thing is food. What are you going to eat? What are you going to drink? And the last thing is accommodation. Where are you going to sleep? And you can make these three things free. And here is how. For transportation, I hitchhiked the old trip. I've been picked up by cars, trucks, vans. Well, that wasn't a van, actually. That was a hearse. You know, the kind of vehicle that transports dead people? So, this hearse was transporting a dad from Leipzig to Dresden, and let's just say I had the privilege to be part of the wonderful journey. I even got a ride from a smart car that was driving 150 kilometers an hour on the highway in Germany. I have to say, I didn't even know such a small car could drive that fast. And I have to say, I was a bit scared. For foods, I was asking local restaurants for leftovers. So I would just run into a restaurant and say, hey, my name is Edward, I'm 23 years old, I'm doing a travel experiment, I try to travel with no money. So if you have anything that is not good anymore, that you plan to throw, that you plan to do, you won't use, you won't sell, and you would like to give it to me, I'll be happy. As expected, most people told me no, but sometimes I received bread. And to be honest, that's sometimes the only thing I ate during the day. During three days, actually, I only ate bread and water. But as you can see, I was happy. But sometimes, people would cook real meal for me from scratch, or give me delicious dishes. This is how I had pizza, Thai kebabs, chocolate cake with cappuccino, gratin dauphinois in Dresden, that chocolate cake and that macaron at the number one cake shop, according to TripAdvisor in Budapest. And that little soup and that fruit juice in the number one restaurant, according to TripAdvisor again in Vienna. And a quick one about that restaurant. When I wanted to sit down, the waiter even pulled out my chair so that I could sit down. I mean, nobody has ever done that to me before in my life. For accommodation now, as I told you, I couldn't use couch surfing. That was part of the challenge. So, same as for the food, I would just run into a complete stranger in the street and say, hey, can I sleep at your place tonight? As expected, people told me no a lot of times. Actually, nine out of ten times, people told me no. But I've learned something from that. What I've learned is to redefine my view about rejection. Now, 
we all face rejections in our daily lives. We go to a job interview, we don't get the job, we get rejected. We go talk to that pretty girl in a bar, we get rejected. The thing is, most of us experience rejections once a day, once a week, sometimes even once a month. We're not so used to it, and that's why it hurts so much. But there are two things that I'd like to share with you about rejection. And that comes from a guy who has experienced an average of 20 rejections a day between the rejections I faced when I was hitchhiking, asking for food, or asking for accommodation. The first thing is that people are never rejecting you. People are rejecting the idea you represent. So never take it personally. When you are hitchhiking, for example, who has ever hitchhiked in his life? Auto stop? What? All right, cool group, guys. When you are hitchhiking, the vast majority of people who won't take you hitchhiking won't do it simply because that's who they are. They don't take hitchhikers. End of the story. Don't take it personally. And the second thing about rejection is that rejection does not mean you won't have anything at all. Rejection just means you'll have something a little bit different. When I was asking random people in the street, hey, can I sleep at your place tonight? And people would tell me no. I wasn't telling myself, all right, that means I'm going to have to sleep outside tonight. No, I was telling myself, all right, that means I'm going to find somebody else and live another experience that might be even better than the one I just missed. I believe we should never be afraid of rejection because it is just part of life. And to me, getting what you want in life is just a matter of being willing to experience enough rejection before having what you actually want. In the end, I didn't sleep a single night outside. It did happen that at 4 a.m. I was still in the streets looking for somebody, but I always found someone. Now, what are the lessons that I've learned from doing that, from doing this trip? I already shared some of them with you, but I'd like now to share with you the four biggest ones I've learned. And I believe these are lessons we can all apply in our daily lives, because in the end, life is a journey too. The first thing I've learned is that this is not about what you get, this is about what you give. I began this journey asking myself, every time I was meeting someone new, what can I get from this person? Can I get food? Can I get a ride? Can I get an accommodation? And I ended up this journey asking myself questions that were completely different. Questions like, what can I give to this person? Can I give a smile, my enthusiasm, an inspiring story to share, an ear to listen to problems, sing a song, dance with them, anything. And switching these questions from the getting to the giving completely changed my journey. And I have to say that I lived the best moments of my journey when I was in the giving mindset and not in the getting mindset. But to give, you have to meet people. And that's the second thing I've learned. Drop the fear to approach people and the world can be an amazing place. Traveling with no money forces you to constantly meet new people because your survival depends on them. In our daily lives, we sometimes even struggle for to, when, when we have to ask our way when we are lost. It is just so easy to take our smartphones and ask Google Maps. We are not so used anymore to start a conversation with a complete stranger and build a relationship out of nothing. This journey taught me to drop my fear of the other. And I've learned that you don't need a good reason to start a conversation. You don't need to be in the same sports club. You don't need to be in the same university or introduced by a common friend. Dare to say hello to a complete stranger. Dare to just run in a bar and say to the first stranger, hey, I just met you. This is crazy. <laughs> no, dare to say, hey, I saw you. I thought you were cool. My name is Edward. Don't say your name is Edward unless your name is Edward. But dare to say it. This guy and his friend, they were carrying a couch around Vienna. 
At each famous stops, seven of them, they had to lay on the couch and just enjoy life. When I saw them, I had to introduce myself. So I told them, hey, you guys are amazing. And they looked at me and they told me, you want to come with us? And this is how I ended up spending the whole afternoon with two guys from Vienna, just carrying a couch around Vienna. The third thing I've learned is that sometimes not having the choice is the best option you can have. When you travel with money, you can basically pick anything you want. The food you're going to eat, the transportation you're going to take, the yacht hostel where you're going to stay at, anything. But when you decide to travel with no money, you just don't have that luxury of choice anymore. So when someone gives you something, you have to accept it. When you are hitchhiking, for example, and someone stops his car, the car looks a bit dirty, the driver doesn't seem to speak the language you are speaking, you can't just say, hey, thank you, but I'll just wait for another car. You can't say that because the person gives you a chance, so you have to give them a chance. And this is how I ended up spending two hours in the truck of a Ukrainian truck driver that didn't speak any languages I was speaking. During two hours, he kept telling me stories in Ukrainian. <laughs> I don't speak Ukrainian. And every 10 minutes, I had to reply him with a broad smile on my face. Yeah, you get that I don't understand a single word of what you're saying, don't you? But you know what? That was one of the most incredible and funniest experience of my journey. Because you see, I am not so sure that if I would have met this guy in a bar in my own town, I would have spent two hours talking with him especially not in Ukrainian. But here, 1,000 kilometers away from home, with no money, I had no choice. And sometimes not having the choice is the best option you can have. And the last thing I've learned is that there are no such things as bad experiences. To me, there are only experiences that lead you to better things. But I believe we should never regret anything. Because the bad things that happen to us make us grow and ultimately lead us to better things. I think it was the second night of my trip. I was in Leipzig, Eastern Germany, and I began around 8 p.m. asking random people in the street, hey, can I sleep at your place tonight? And four hours later, and 20 rejections later, I found myself in Leipzig still, in midnight, complete darkness, with still nobody to host me. And I began asking myself questions. Questions like, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself in such conditions where I experience rejections and so, so, so much bad things? But then I met these four German girls, and they accepted to host me. And they told me, first, we go to a nightclub and you are coming with us. I was so happy. And at some point of the night, one of them asked me, Edward, what's the worst thing about traveling the way you do? And I thought about it, and I replied, well, you know, nothing. Because you see, tonight I've experienced more than 20 rejections. During four hours, I felt really bad. But all these little rejections and bad things lead me at the right time, at the right place, where I crossed your path. And going to a nightclub with you is not something I'm going to forget for a very long time. So I don't regret anything. And that's basically the story of my journey, how all these little rejections and bad things that happened to me led me to meet the people who made my journey and to live moments I will remember as long as I'll live. As a closing, am I trying to sell you something? Am I suggesting that you should just leave your wallet and all your money at home and start traveling the way I did? Of course not. If it's not your thing, don't do it. But all I want to say is, dare a bit more. A little bit of courage can change your life. It changed mine. Ask yourself the question, what would I do if I were completely fearless? Go talk to that stranger, dare to face rejection. Go on an adventure. 
Because in the end, like Helen Keller once said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Thank you very much.